Would you like to learn about the cloud architect career? Are you concerned about all the cloud architect career misconceptions and solution architect career misconceptions? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs and I'm the founder and CEO of GoCloud Careers an organization that's dedicated towards building the most high-performance cloud computing careers. Personally, I've been working in technology now for over 25 years, and I've been helping others get their first tech job or get promoted in tech for more than two decades, and I want to help you get cloud hired. In today's video, we're going to have me and Alonzo Coleman from my team, and we're going to talk about some of the things that are confusing so many people. See, there's so many solution architect career misconceptions and cloud architect career misconceptions that when people desire to become a cloud architect or a solution architect or an enterprise architect, they're often lost. And they often spend so much time learning things, but unfortunately they're the wrong things. So in this video, Alonzo Coleman from my team is gonna interview me on the most commonly confused things. We're gonna give you our answers so you can get cloud hired and build the career of your dreams. Hello everyone, this is Alonzo Coleman of Go Cloud Careers. And with me again is Michael Gibbs, CEO and founder of Go Cloud Careers. And today we're going to talk about the common points of confusion between a cloud architect and a cloud engineer. So, Mike, are you ready for the series of questions we have for you today? Absolutely. I want to get anyone that wants a cloud computing job in the world, a cloud computing job, as I like to call it, cloud hired. So, yes, let's give as much free guidance and advice as we can to help make get people their first cloud architect job, cloud engineer job, get promoted in tech. That's what I live for. All right, let's go. Let's get into it. Okay, we want to know first, what is a cloud architect? Great question. So this is where most people have it confused. They have this misconception that a cloud architect is a techie. Hmm. But it couldn't be further from the truth. A cloud architect is a hybrid professional. It's predominantly a business executive mixed with a technology professional. And the point of the cloud architect is to transform an organization's business with their tool, cloud-based technology, which is an exceptional role because it is an executive combined with a company technology professional all in the same person, it is a rare person to find. It's kind of like finding a unicorn. Yeah. And because of this, the cloud architect salaries are sky high because we've got a very short supply and a very big demand. So when we look at these supply and demand curves from economics, specifically macroeconomics, we understand why when there's a huge need and a very minimal supply, that the cloud architect has paid so much. So let's talk about this position. I like to define it in three words, design, present, and sell, because that's really what we do. We interact with clients, we learn about their business, and we build a plan called an architecture to transform that business. Now, what is that plan? It could be anything. It could be applications designed to increase sales. It could be applications designed to get people talking to each other. It could be something to optimize the supply chain. It could be robotics to replace people. It could be automation. It could literally be anything. But it's really about transforming the customer's business. So hybrid executive slash technology professional. This is not a hands-on position. This is a leadership position. This is a position where we're all about improving our customer's business performance with whatever the tools that we have to our disposal, which are predominantly called technologies, but also process reengineering to some degree as well. People, education, it's all about making the customer's business performance better. Ah, wonderful. Okay. Okay. So I'm thinking about how creative and, and how lucrative a cloud engineer and a cloud architect can be. Is there an opportunity to combine those roles into one unicorn, as you say? Um, and, and what would you think about that? Here's the problem. You can't be in two places at the same time. Okay. So if a doctor is taking care of their patients in the office, they can't be at the hospital, and that's why they have nurses. The nurses care for the patients according to the doctor's plan. You can't be flying an airplane, taking off and landing, and keeping the patients comfortable in the backseat and safe at the same time. So you really can't do both, and here's the reason why. The focus, and it's all about focus. The focus of the cloud architect is digital transformation. So the way a cloud architect gets better is more business, more business, more business. More business, more leadership, more knowledge of the industry that they're trying to solve, better knowledge of how to increase revenue, how to decrease costs, how to improve productivity. The architect, as they get better, focuses on business, 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 and business. 
the engineer, which is what makes them great, is their ability to build the technology, make it sing, tune it, perform it, optimize it. It's a great career, but if you're flying the airplane, you can't be fixing the engine at the same time. You, so you just can't do two things. So I get this a lot, and I see it happen all the time where our cloud engineers want to be architects, and what do they focus on? Engineering. And you know what they become great? They become better cloud engineers, but no one will hire them for architecture because their focus is in the wrong place. It's on the tech. I like to use this as an example because I like the stars. I always like looking at the sun and moon and the stars. Well, not the sun directly, but you get the concept. But I like to lay down in a chair. I live in Florida. It's nice and warm, and I like to look at the, star the stars. And sometimes my cat, Cindy, likes to sit on my belly or my chest while I look at the stars, and she stares at them with me. It's kind of fun. And I look at the Big Dipper, the Little Dipper, the moon. It's really kind of beautiful. Because I live in Florida, I smell the salt air at the same time. It's fun. Now, I also love telescopes, Alonzo. I love them. And I'm going to give you the difference between the cloud architect that's got this big bird's eye view. We're looking at everything. Me and I cat Cindy, and we're having a great time. And then I take out one of my great telescopes. And I love telescopes. And then I zoom in on the moon. Wow. Well, I can tell you one thing. The moon is not made out of cheese, <laughs> despite that misconception. And I can see the craters on the moon. It is so beautiful, Alonzo. I love telescopes. But you know what I can't see? The sky. Mm -hmm. So when a cloud architect focuses on one thing, they miss the big picture. That cloud architect needs to be at that sky-high bird's eye view looking at everything. And the second they focus on something, they miss something. So you got to remember, the cloud architect focuses on digital transformation. The cloud engineer focuses on the tech. If you're focused too much on building and configuring the tech, you don't have the ability to transform your customer's business, which means you become the worst cloud architect and cloud engineer. You become equally bad at both. So it's a matter of pick one. Either be a great cloud engineer and focus on the tech or be a great cloud architect and focus on transforming your customer's business. But if you divide your focus, you become a hobbyist at both and not good at either. I, I see. Okay, thanks for clarifying that. And would you blame that or that's the reason why everyone finds those those two roles confusing between the two? I don't think that's exactly what's causing it. So I've been an architect now for almost two and a half decades. And I come from the companies that designed architectures like IBM and Cisco and Microsoft. They're big architecture companies. They walk into a company, they evaluate their business, and they propose solutions to truly tune those businesses. They're great at it. And they always have separated their systems designers from their systems builders, their architects from the engineers. Okay. Now in recent years, the cloud providers made a solution architect exam, which was really a cloud admin now exam, which is the name of the service and how to configure it. It had nothing to do with architecture. Mm. And in the old days when you got architecture training and you went to an IBM or a Cisco and you paid for it too, I mean thousands and thousands of dollars to get real training, you were taught by an expert architect, and they taught architectural design principles, how to build, how to design, how to scale, how to solve business problems. That's the way they were taught. In recent years, after the certification, we had anybody that could buy a webcam, a microphone, start making PowerPoint slides and making certification courses. In most cases, they never had the job in their entire life. And what they did is they'd go and get 10 certifications, and they teach 10 certifications, but the problem is they've never had that job in their life. Mm. So they're teaching a career that they have no idea. Nice. And when you're teaching something you have no idea, what happens, you create a lot of certified people that are unemployable. And that's why I came out of retirement to start this company. I've gotten people hired almost every day of the week because I know what an architect is. And truthfully, Alonzo, I was retired. I was happily in retirement. I would have never come out of retirement, but I had no choice. I interviewed a 1,000 AWS certified people that took these certification courses, and none of them knew how to design anything. Oh, wow. Because all they had was cloud admin skills, not architecture skills. And I felt so bad out of it that I came out of retirement to start Go Cloud Careers. Now, almost every day, we've got a cloud architect that gets hired. It's really exciting for me. It's like my big oh, party celebration every day. Okay. Okay. So when it comes to cloud architects... I, I, I like to figure out, oh, is, is there any relationship with the engineer? I mean, do you, do they code? Is that a part of their uh, responsibilities? Great question. So the cloud architect is not a hands-on technology, but we are critically dependent upon the cloud engineers. And guess what? They're critically dependent upon us too. So let's talk about the difference why. I'm a cloud architect. My job is to design, present, and sell a solution and bring it into the company to improve my customer's business performance. 
So I go meet with the executives. I get their business requirements. I then uh, need to baseline their systems. So I build in a, bring in a team of cloud engineers. They baseline their systems. We do a proof of concept. The cloud engineers do it. Then I do it. I, I, I sell it back, present it, and sell it back to them, negotiate a deal, and it's done. I brought the business into the company with the account manager, and I now have work for the cloud engineers to do, which is build my solution. See, as a cloud architect, I make blueprints and documents, just like a building architect. But it's the cloud engineers, these magical people that bring it to life. Without a cloud engineer, we've got PowerPoint wear, pretty PowerPoint pictures and pretty documents. <laughs> the cloud engineers are the magic behind bringing it to life. Okay. So two things occur. We bring in the business, which provides the jobs for the cloud engineers, but also, guess what? Our focus is business. We are all focused about business, business, business. Okay. So when we meet with that client and they give us business requirements, we're going to have to go back to those engineers. How do we make it work? How do we tune it? How do we optimize it? So for the architect and the engineers, it's a marriage. Now, we bring in the business for the engineers. The engineers often advise us because they're the depends on technology professionals. Like cloud architect never touches the tech. Well, let me be fair about that. The cloud architect writes a Word document. They make PowerPoint bit doc, doc, graphics and, vi and visual documentations. We make Excel spreadsheets. We could use like a Visio, a Draw.io, or a, a Lucid chart to draw a picture. But we don't touch the technology. Not a cloud engineer. Deep technology professional. Hands on tech. Code, configure, automate, infrastructure's code, deep. But it's really, it's a marriage between the two people. It's not an either or. I see. Okay, so that includes uh, no Terraform, no list, um, none of these, or confirmation or any of these things to help them along. That's, that's not what a cloud architect do either. See, the cloud architect will never touch Terraform. They'll never touch Linux. They'll never write a code. They'll never write a script because that's not our job. Nice. Now, the cloud engineer will. And for the cloud engineer, it's not about getting certified and you've got a job at all. It's about the cloud engineer needs to truly understand those network and data center components and have a deep knowledge of Linux and administering Linux and engineering Linux and deploying uh, Terraform as infrastructure as code. It could be CloudFormation, but reality in today's world is why would anybody use a CloudFormation template? It only works on AWS, but Terraform works on all clouds. Well, Mike, you shared a lot about what cloud architects don't do or what cloud engineers do do. There's no coding, there's no Terraform, there's no Linux. Linux. So how do cloud architects spend their time in their roles? Glad you asked that question. So there's several things we do. The first thing we do, let's face it, we go to meetings, 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 and more meetings. I would like to say we spend 50% of our time in meetings. So much so that it'll be weeks where you do nothing other than meetings. Mm. So if we're in all these meetings, what goes on in these meetings? Well, we're in meetings to get customer requirements. We're delivering presentations. We're providing strategic guidance to our customers, business and technical. We're going to be managing internal resources of people on our team that will help us with proof of concepts, for example, and architectural designs. I like to say architecture is a team sport because no one person ever designs an architecture. When we get back to the client, we go and say, okay, I need a cloud architect, a security architect, cloud network architect, an IAM architect, a big data architect, and we get together. So we're going to be managing the resources so that we can coordinate the entire design throughout the group. Now, in order to build these large teams of highly educated, highly paid people, we've got to convince our management to give them to us for a period of time. So we've got to go sell our internal management. That's a lot of meetings that we need to do on the, on the opportunity and why we need the people. Then we design that solution. We've got to go sell it back to the customers. So that means more meetings. Now, when, after, when the process of selling it, nobody buys it. The initially, we've got to go negotiate the deal. And of course, we present at conferences. I like to call that meetings. But... I'd say that's 50% of the job. So 15 to 25% of the job is actually writing. Mm. Okay, so what are we writing? We're, design, we're, we're writing architectural design documents. We're responding to RFIs, requests for information, RFPs, requests for proposal, RFQs, requests for quotes or pricing. We're writing thought leadership document. We're writing white papers to get customers to buy our solutions. We're writing internal requests for people. Now, about... 10 to 20% of our time is spent entertaining clients. So we're taking our clients to lunches, dinners, drinks, golf. And why do we do so much of this? We've got to elicit information from the client. And when we get a client drunk, they're more likely to talk than yeah. we're in the boardroom. 
<laughs> so we spent a lot of times having dinners, having drinks, but it's also about relationship development. We really want to develop a relationship with our customers because we need access to good information. And let's face it, you don't give access to good information if you don't trust the person. So we need that relationship. So this is really critical. That's a lot of what we're doing. Now, we also do something I like to call firefighting. And not the firefighting I did at my youth with heavy hoses and pulling people out of cars. Firefighting is in putting out fires. So there will be times where somebody offends a customer. You've got to go in there and kiss some babies and do some smoothing. Mm. Someone will make a mistake, and you've got to go there and own the relationship and make it better. Somebody will offend somebody. You've got to go there and do something. It's all about kissing babies and smoothing is something else we do. Now, I said the last thing that we do is administrative work. Phone calls, responding to emails. See, that's the basis of the cloud architect job. And that's how we spend our time. But you can see it's mostly business. Right. If not, it's facilitating, coordinating, designing, presenting, and selling. I see. Okay. Okay. Well, that makes you brought it all together for us. Ladies and gentlemen and everyone, thank you so much for uh, coming together and, and meeting with us with Mike, CEO of Gold Cloud Careers, and myself, Elonzo Coleman. Thank you so much, and we look forward to uh, joining us on the next one. Take care. Take care. I hope you've enjoyed this video where we discussed common cloud architect career misconceptions. To help you build your cloud computing career, we have a completely free How to Get Your First Cloud Architect webinar every Thursday. On this webinar, we will tell you everything you need to do to get your first cloud architect job. And if you've got questions on your cloud computing career, I'm online completely free on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays to answer your cloud computing career questions so you can get your first cloud architect job, first solution architect job, first cloud engineer job, or build the cloud career of your dreams. I look forward to seeing you there, and I look forward to seeing you in another video coming soon.